Welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start with our first question. Uh, does content shape experience design or does it work the other way? Uh, what do you think about the importance of content in experience design process? Wow, that's, that's a difficult one. I mean, um, without a doubt, content plays an important role in the experience that people have, especially in the digital age, where there is so much content flying around. You can have content on your fingertips whenever you want it. I think it's not the content that is shaping the experience. I think it's the other way around. We need to create an experience and um, deliver the contents that are valuable for that experience. Because I think with the content, with thousands and millions of hours of video and pages to read, your content needs to be tailored and it needs to be underneath. You need to have a clear vision on what your experience should be. And then you can build up the content to support that. What do you think about Laura Mipsum? What I think about Laura Mipsum? Well, from time to time it's helpful. Uh, I'm not a fan of Laura Mipsum, honestly, uh, because uh, I think it doesn't serve well. Um, if you only take uh, the couple of uh, sentences that Laura Mipsum has and the kinds of content you're creating, it's repetitive and you don't have a natural flow of the layout and the designs. So what I would always suggest to do is take a random article out of Wikipedia a long one and just copy them in. It is a natural flow of some of a real text with real rhythm and real words and real sentences and you can exchange it later on to your copy. Uh, we are almost at the end of 2017 and we are still asked to fill in forms, web forms in, yeah. uh, on desktop devices and mobile devices. Yeah. Uh, do you think we'll somehow get rid of web forms in the future? Well, where do you think uh, there is the solution to that? Um, I think there will be a time in the future where we might get rid of filling in web forms. But as again, uh, what is a web form? Um, there's a plethora of web forms. So if you refer to the web forms that you use to buy stuff on the internet, I'm pretty sure that will, these will be gone pretty quickly. I mean, we're doing everything to get rid of them. You fill them out once, and if you add a profile, you don't have to fill them out again. Um, so they're just there, you just click, yeah, and then you're done. If you're doing things for the first time, maybe in, in future there's a platform which can ultimately uh, transfer and is accepted by everyone, automatically transfer your personal data into a firm, you will get rid of that too. When you say all web forms, I don't think there will be something uh, in the future that will get all of our web forms forever. The question is more, will we find alternative ways of filling them? So for example, um, when you carry a device with you which stores your identity and it's secured and you want to make a transaction and you have to put in a TAN code to make that transaction on the bank side, maybe putting that code against the computer will be enough to fill in. So it's more about how we find clever ways to fill the pre-fill them as quickly as possible. Do you think conversational uh, forms and chatbots uh, have a, a realistic feature? If you combine them, um, what is the feature of a chatbot? Um, the feature of a chatbot is per se not something, I mean you don't talk to a chatbot because you want to talk to a chatbot. You talk to a chatbot because you need advice. You're asking questions and you want the questions to be answered. Maybe you even want to have a conversation. So my question is not if there's a value in chatbots, but if you can, can we create conversations and meaningful conversations with chatbots for users and what is needed for that? And when you say chatbots alone, I would say no. If you say chatbots and artificial intelligence, I say hell yes. We will see in future um, a lot of cases where you can interact with a computer in a chat way and there is no human being behind that but you don't, you don't realize that. And so yes, I think there will be a future for that and even more, I think there will be a future of AI and alternative interfaces like natural speech that you talk to your computer like you can see it 
are already happening. I mean, the first steps are Siri, Alexa, all this stuff. Act, trying to act with your computer or a website or a service, asking them, how can I have a better uh, plan for my insurance? And the computer answering you, well, uh, for me as a professional insurance um, advisor, I can tell you this and this and this. And you're not talking with your computer, you're talking with a website. And that could, I imagine, is, is something very exciting. Do you think content strategy can uh, lead to uh, better sustainability? I do think it, it can do, it can do, but it depends on what you're, what you're selling actually. I mean, honestly, if you're selling a car, there is a limited space for you to perceive your brand with content because the product you're selling is the car and the experience driving that car. So yes, there are niches where you can do that. If your brand is content, it's the only way to go. I mean, if you're, as a brand, are, is, uh, if you're talking about entertainment, if you're talking about news information, you are content. So that's at the same time your marketing strategy as well as it is your product. So yes, you need to. So definitely, yeah. And let me ask the same question, uh, but about environmental sustainability. Um, Partially, I would say, because the content is, if you talk about say, sustainability, if you talk about the things that really matters beyond products and our lifestyle, it's not, content is not enough because it's already there. Um, if you want to get informed about what is happening around you and if you want to get informed of what you can do to uh, make the world a little bit better and more sustainable, it's already there. I think the, the key will be to activate people to act upon content. Uh, and that will be the key to help to make content uh, valuable for sustainability. If you're just offering content, people will most of the time consume it, but that's that, and that doesn't help anyone. So if you wanted to get people to act, I think a good example for that one is, um, is uh, ah, ah, come on, how are they called? Most famous, uh, uh, most famous non-governmental organization um, helping people uh, who are captured for political reasons. Um, how are they called? Amnesty International. Amnesty International. Thank you very much. My head's like a hole. Um, Amnesty International is actually really, really, really good in doing that. They not only have the contents, they also have the people that are representative for this content and are believable and they call upon you to act upon this content. They're just not delivering that content, but they're pushing you to act upon that content. And that is, I think that's the key. If we can get people to act upon this content, we'll make the whole world a whole lot more sustainable. Uh, during your keynote speech, uh, you mentioned frequently about cats and dogs. Yeah. Uh, do you use uh, cats and dogs uh, when you need to define personas? I'm not using them, honestly, I'm not writing down that nah, that's a cat. I'm, it's just always in the back of my mind. It's the general behavior of a cat that it's very individual, very unique and you need to obey to a cat and that's the ground rule and that's what I'm recalling all the way when I'm when we're in workshops when we ideate do ideation uh, do empathy phases of projects that we think about that we respect the consumer or the the employee or the person the human being that we're trying to design a service or a product for that we respect this person in all its quirkness in all its weirdness and all its maybe we didn't foresee any kind of behavior but we need to accept it because um, you cannot fool people into liking things either you hit the nerve and you do something that people like or you don't and if you don't you're screwed so you got to take these people serious and they're just, I hate the word target group because it sounds like I'm aiming for somebody and I'm shooting them and that's not what I want to do. I'm looking for audience, I'm looking for personas. So people who are real and I want to do a trade value with them. I say, I'll give you something that is really valuable for you and in return you give something back. That can be your that can be your interest, that can be your time, it can be money, 
It can be anything, but it's a trade deal. You cannot expect people to jump in and do stuff and act like you want them to if you don't give them anything which is valuable for them. So that's the reason why I come up with this cats and dog. And for 20 years ago, marketing was about educating a dog. You would say, go there, do this. Um, here's, here's, here's the uh, sausage, come, come, yeah. It's not working that way. You gotta respect and you got to deliver value. And that's the, that's the big thing. And that's why I'm always thinking about cats and dogs. It's always in the back of my mind, but, but honestly, never, there was never a cat on any of my personas, so. <laughs> uh, final question. Uh, what, would, what would be the one and only suggestion to uh, young professionals working in the uh, areas of design, software, and technology uh, from where you see our future? What would that one suggestion be? The one suggestion, be curious at hell, as hell. Be interested in everything. Whether you have studied design, be interested in technology, try to learn it. Because the better you understand it, the, it's like a toolbox, the better stuff you can build with it. If you're coming from technology, understand design, understand human beings, understand what they want and what they feel, what they like and, and what they feel comfortable with. Because then you will be able to build amazing products. So be curious and never stop asking and never stop doubting stuff. Never take anything for granted. Um, always ask if there's a reason to ask and change if there's a reason to change. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank It you so much for having you. me. Thank It was you. a pleasure.